Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, trimmed with black, and weighing in at 147 pounds. His professional record, 31 bouts. 31 victories, including 26 knockouts. He comes to us from Augusta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the IBF number two ranked welterweight in the world, the undefeated Vernon the Viper Forrest. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with red, and weighing in at 146 and one half pounds. His professional record, 23 victories, including 12 knockouts. He has three losses and one draw. He comes to us from Brooklyn, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the number one ranked welterweight in the world, Raul Frank. All right, ring center. Okay, fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution to be my commands at all times and keep the fight clean at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. They're fighting for the title vacated by Felix Trinidad when he moved up to the junior middleweight division. Vernon Farr is trying to prove not that it's better late than never, but that sometimes it's better late than early. Vernon Forrest trained for this fight by Ronnie Shields, who's been with him for a long time, and Al Mitchell, whom you may remember as an outstanding amateur coach who trained David Reed to his prominence as a professional. Reed, incidentally, had double surgery on both eyelids day before yesterday as they continue to try to aid that droopy eyelid problem for Reed. And while Reed recovers, Mitchell trained Vernon Forrest in the gym for this fight while Ronnie Shields was spending his time with David Tua. Now, what does Vernon want to do to take advantage well, of his, his height and his range, uh, Manuel? Well, I think he needs to stay busy with his jab and try to keep the fight at a distance. The one thing that he does have over Rawl is the fact that he's faster. The speed is going to be a big factor, I think, going down the stretch. Rawl does everything very well, but just a little bit slower than Vernon. If Vernon keeps busy with his jab and studies the way that Rawl picks his jab, then he'll be able to take advantage of that and to work off of his left jab. In his last big assignment here in Las Vegas on a doubleheader with Shane Mosley last year, Forrest went 10 tough rounds with Vince Phillips, pounded Phillips from pillar to post, but couldn't put him away and slipped in the estimation of some experts who said, well, he's not explosive enough to be with the top level of the welterweights. Well, when you're a fighter like Vernon is, he's a good, solid fighter, just good enough where the good fighters don't want to fight him, but not exciting enough in any area where the fans and the media demand that he fights a big fight. It's very frustrating, but he's going to have to look impressive in this fight. He's fighting a fighter that no one knows too much about, and just to merely win the fight like he did with Vince Phillips would not be enough. So Forrest bangs the left hook to the body and comes back upstairs, and Kenny Bayless says, Vernon, I think that left hook to the body was lower than I'd like to see it. Well, the one thing that I do like about Vernon, he's very busy. He's dictating the fight. Rawl is reacting to his actions for the most part. If you, if you know much about the sport, you can see the speed that we're in. It's easy to see that Raul Frank is just a half step behind Vernon Forrest. Yes, and he's really put loading up on his left hook, but when he misses his left hook, he loses his balance. As long as Vernon blocks his punch, he can kind of maintain his balance, but if Vernon makes him miss completely, you'll see him spin around. There's a red spot above the left eye of Raul Frank, as it appears that already a Forrest right hand has brought a trickle of blood. Clean, fellas. There we go. Step back clean. There we go. One of the mistakes I think that Renner is making in his last fight, he was criticized by his trainer, Ronnie Shields, for fighting, leaning in too close and not utilizing his height. Huh? All right, look. Just relax. Mm -hmm. Just relax. Don't worry about nothing, all right? I know. But you're forgetting about a few things. You're throwing a jab on the outside. 
you hit him with the jab a little bit, okay? okay? And that's why you mess with the right hand. If you don't touch him with this, you ain't gonna hit him with this one, okay? okay. Step up a little more. Yeah, okay. another thing is, give me the water. I got it, give me the water. Don't press it, just leave it there. Wow, a little bit more jabs, okay? Come on. Close round. Okay, but nice round. I want you to move your feet more. Don't stand in front of them, okay? And double, double jam. Pop, don't you have one? Expecting that. The only thing going wrong, you're not throwing punches, okay? All right, man, let's go. In his last fight on the undercard of Felix Trinidad versus Hugo Pineda in San Juan, Puerto Rico, May 29 of last year, Raul Frank was headbutted and suffered cuts above and below his left eye. The spot where they were treating him between rounds is identical to the spot. In fact, it's along the scar from last year's cut. There's some interesting that Rawl is not throwing all of any right hands. Mostly what he's favoring is the left hook. He tries to kind of like fall in with his jab where he can get in range close enough to throw a left hook. But very seldom does he throw his right hand. Work out, work out, let him go, let him go. Could that be uh, a product of ring rust? I think the basic, you know, uh, he doesn't have the good fluid footwork that a lot of the kids from the amateur program that we have here in America have. And what would be a big advantage for Vernon if he would just take a half a step back whenever Raw comes in and then punch. Because every time that he comes in, he kind of, we say, fumbles and falls in when he punches. Vernon Bayless is going to have a lot of work if they keep falling oh, yes. into each other and holding like this. And that's really, a, I would say that the person that's getting the dis disadvantage is basically Vernon. He's a much taller fighter and he should be utilizing his height much better than he's in. Frank holding on to Forrest every time he gets close. You saw Forrest land an extended right hand. There's another left hook to the body that backs Frank off. But if, 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 if Frank would come in and Vernon would just take that half a step back, he would not have much of a problem. In fact, it's getting to be almost a contest of left hooks for the most part. Forrest launching a right hand across the top, and Frank makes a taunting comment to Forrest. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that the key punch in the fight to me would be if Vernon would just work his jab, work his jab, and try to land a good straight right hand. Frank seems to be very vulnerable for a straight right hand, which surprises that Vernon hasn't thrown enough of. Come on, guys. Work. Come on, let's see you work out of here. Work out of here. Right. Let's go. Cut from Forrest. Frank with a left hook to the body and then kind of sets himself and cringes as Forrest misses with the right. Two good body punches from Vernon Forrest there. Now Frank comes back to the body with the right and the left. That's the right hand. the best run. Now listen to me. Keep going behind that jab like that. Joe, what's on his mouth? On his mouth. Oh, okay. No. Keep going behind the jab like that. Now look, he don't like them body shots, all right? But you're giving, you're giving us one. Give us two of them, okay? Not just one. And look, you throw throwing right here. Cross your blocks. Cross your blocks. You hear what I just told you? Mm -hmm. Don't rub it hard, Pop. Just hold it there. Hold it. Easy. All right. Spit there, just spit on that bucket. So far, Forrest has been throwing the harder, meaner intentioned fights. There you see a counter punch from Frank with his, by sticking out his tongue. He's gonna have to start using his fists soon. <laughs> and later in the round, a hard body shot, that left hook dug into Frank. Let's get the water. Fellas, watch your heads, watch your heads, guys. Here we go. Kenny Bayless asking the fighters to try to watch their heads. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I always think, how can I watch my head? I'm, I'm fighting in front of it. Good try. Good try. And 
media heard Ronnie Shields asking Forrest to do what Manuel Stewart has suggested, simply work more up, behind the jab. Come on. The jab is a key to this fight. When you take the jab away, the fight is almost a toss-up. Little counter left hook landed for Forrest inside. Yeah. Ronnie Shields also telling Vernon Frank doesn't like it to the body. Not many fighters do. Keep him up. Oh, oh, oh. Keep him up. Up. Oh, keep him up. But I will say this about Frank. He's a very determined fighter. I can see that it's going to be a very tough fight. Unless he gets knocked out clean, uh, injured, it's going to be a rough fight for Vernon. Even though he's much superior in every area, Step back clean, fellas. he's still fighting a fight that's very determined. I'm, uh, to some degree, maybe slightly surprised. You can see why Bobby Jackson said of him, hey, this guy never puts in a bad fight. Nope. And the first time that you ease up or slip a little bit with a fight like this, you can lose. Vernon Forrest overshooting there with what could have been a dangerous right hand. One punch at a time by and large for both guys except for those occasions when Forrest has worked combinations to the body. Neither puncher has landed an effective combination to the head. Oh, and there's a oh, bad headbutt. It's time. It's time. Oh, bad headbutt. Forrest in pain and Frank, as you can see, oh, down on God. the canvas. And a bad cut. Lots of blood. Accidental. It's conceivable Accidental. we could Accidental. have a accidental but TD and the technical draw well, possible. Draw here. Draw here. Less than four Harold rounds. Letterman, what's the rule? It's got to go four rounds. If it doesn't go four and we're in the third round now, I believe the IBF calls it a no contest, but in essence, it's a technical draw, so nobody wins. So their terminology would be no contest. No contest yeah. Yeah. Same thing, in effect. Well, exactly. having seen the first two and a half rounds, I'm not sure anybody wants to see this again, which would have yeah. to happen. And Kenny Bayless is waving it off on advice from the doctor. No contest. Mark Ratner assuring us over the ropes. No contest. And that is just as Harold Letterman told you would be the case. That's all right. We fight again on all cards. Oh, no, that's right, baby. Come here. I just told you that. I said, what? What got up? I said, why? Forrest was lucky to escape a cut there. And uh, Frank broke open like some ice cream. Yeah, bring some ice. The proverbial coconut. Yeah, I'm trying to get it. Come on. And the blood started to spurt. Well, that leaves a flat feeling no, no, even flatter. Bag. Yeah, and, <laughs> and yet another delay in Vernon Forrest's attempted march to stardom because he gets no championship belt here and now must continue to watch the deck shuffle in the welterweight division and wait for his opportunity. And, and here's let's take another look. Manny, what happened? Yeah. Well, basically, we have two guys that keep colliding, and what happened? They both were going in throwing left hooks at the same time. I think which, that could have possibly been averted if Vernon Forrest had stayed in more of upright di distance and jabbed more. He was leaning in too much, I think, for the boxing ability that he has, and that's what I was afraid would have happened. Crowd responding to the video of this clash of heads. Both throwing left hooks at the same time and coming forward. If you're an ardent Raul Frank fan, you might say, why doesn't that be, why isn't that called an intentional headbutt? But the answer is, Forrest was attempting a punch, legitimately. Yes, both guys were in the process of delivering left hooks. And the worst part about this, because of the severeness of the cuts, it means it may be four months before they can fight. A cut to that degree may end up requiring possibly two or three months of rest before he could even resume training. So it's just as delayed for Vernon Forrest, who has waited and waited for his moment on the stage in the welterweight division and now must wait some more. This is so sad. Perhaps to set up another fight with Raul Frank. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. In the ring in the previous round, there was an unintentional and accidental clash of heads resulting in a very severe laceration to Raul Frank. The bout cannot continue under the unified rules of the joint commissions. The bout is called no contest because it did not reach four complete rounds. We're very sorry. The contest, I'm sure, 
will be rescheduled. A round of applause, please, for Vernon Forrest and Raul Frank. Early scoring in the fight showed Raul Frank holding his own with Vernon Forrest. It was 1919 on a couple of the cards. Uh, in both instances, judges had given Frank the first round. One of the three judges gave the first two rounds to Forrest, but nothing conclusive about the first two rounds of scoring in the fight. And so now, as you look at Raul Frank, and let's go to Larry Merchant with Vernon Forrest. Thank you, Jim. Vernon, you waited so long for this uh, opportunity. It must be awful frustrating. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I train, train extremely hard. I train too much, extremely hard in the mountains in Colorado. I was looking forward to becoming a world champion. And unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, you know, it was an accident ahead. But, but I just like to thank God for blessing me. I'd like to thank Al Mitchell, Ronnie Shields, and Charles Washington for training me and giving me that first start. All right, describe to us what happened and why did it happen? Were you both falling into each other? Was it just a conflict of styles here? It, possibly a little bit of both. I think I was going for um, a body shot. My corner told me to start working the body more, and I, I dipped in. I went for the jab and I dipped in and throw a body shot and we just clash heads. But we had clash heads a couple of times before then because uh, every time I go, I was going in, he'll duck in and and kind of put his head in the way. So you know, it was just unfortunate that happened. All right, we're going to take a look at this in a moment. It just seemed like uh, maybe you were looking at a mirror image of yourself in him in the ring. It's possibly, possibly. He's a he was a very skilled fighter and he. You know, he, he came in to fight, and I knew that it was going to be a tough fight, but I was just trying to break him down, and, uh, you know, what can I say? Do you feel that for as long as the fight went that you were accomplishing what you set out to accomplish? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't go in. We didn't train for a knockout. We was going to break him down sy systematically. We was going to break him down. Each round, we was going to take a little something out of him, take a little something out of him. Around fifth or sixth round, we was going to knock him out. But, uh, like I said, it's unfortunate what happened. Thanks very much, Vernon. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry. Emmanuel, if you're training a fighter like Vernon Forrest and he has to wait and wait and wait for his chance to become a star and now he'll have to wait some more, do you worry at some point that he's going to lose his edge in the gym and begin to slip in his skill level? Definitely, especially when you consider the fact that the guy that he beat in the Olympic trials is not only a world champion today, he's a superstar, I meaning Shane Mosley. It's got to be very frustrating for him. This fight right here, I could see it was going to be a very frustrating fight because both guys were tall, but they had a habit of basically getting into a left hook battle. And by throwing the hooks, it was both banging heads continually. I think in a rematch, if Vernon boxes and keeps the distance a little bit better, he'll come out a little bit better than this fight. Now let's see what Raul Frank thinks of that as we go back to Larry Merchant in the ring. All right, Jim, thank you. Raul, uh, describe what you felt happened and what led to that clash of heads. Uh, I was going to show, I think it was a, a left uppercut, while um, Vernon just leaned forward, you know, and pushed his head right at me. And I think it was an intentional head boot. Thank you. Thank you. You Tell thought that was intentional? Yeah, intentional? He butted him in the well, first and the second. Ow. Why would he want to intentionally yeah. headbutt you because and have the end of a way. fight? He fights I mean, explain that, that to us. He fights with his head down. He's supposed down. to be a, 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 um, the top guy, the, the 20 to 1. Um, I'm the 20 to 1 long shot. And um, so I, felt why would it, he need... I felt his strength, he, you know. He so wait, wait, wait. Rounds, Excuse me, I'm, in, I'm doing this and interview. you're doing a bad job. All right, thank you. And you're doing a great job. Yeah, um, I always have. Why would, if he's a 20 to 1 favorite, and you describe what you see here, why would he have to resort to this? He was just trying to throw because a buddy shot. I was waiting. I was waiting for the later rounds to come on. That's what we planned. From round four, I will, I will completely take over this fight. You know, but um, I'm just disappointed, and I'm sorry. You know, I want to tell my fans back home in Guyana. I'm you very did sorry nothing. You did about a great this. Job. But you, the you next waited time when we get back into this ring, and we will definitely, I'm taking home the title. You Guyana. waited a long time for this. A very long and time. I, I trained since February. You know, I did my training since February for this fight, and I'm I'm so disappointed. It's unbelievable what could happen in a short space of time. You know, we're all disappointed. Disqualified. Good luck That's next time. All right, Jim. Just spin it right in there. Don't worry about it. Up your hands. Be sharp. Change your angle. 
Give him that, hey, hey, come on. That snappy punch. So you saw the copy 